In Estonia, there is a circumstance where the law says you must not wear a seatbelt and you can't drive between 25 and 40 kilometers an hour. What is that circumstance? I'll say that one more time. In Estonia, there is a circumstance where the law says you must not wear a seatbelt and you can't drive between 25 and 40 kilometers an hour. What is that circumstance? And I will say that it does involve you being in a car driving before anyone immediately comes in <laughs> with the pedantic answers there. You can, this is a driving situation. I, I mean, I'm not sure how you would get to 45 kilometers per hour without first going through 25 to 40 kilometers an hour. Um, so mm. I feel like maybe the, there's a, it's an you, it's a stretch of road where, or, or you know, where you are already driving at that speed. The, you know, above 40 or below 25 um, and, and you cannot slow down or speed up. Is it the movie Speed? <laughs> <laughs> Just the Estonian version of that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bus that couldn't slow down. Yeah. I was thinking it's like driving on an ice lake of some sort and they don't want you to wear the seat belt because if it, the ice breaks you want to be get out you want to be able to get out of the car quickly mm. man all my questions this episode are just being absolutely knocked out of the park that just makes so much sense because if you go phenomenal. too slow you'll probably fall in if you go too fast you'll crack the ice no, not quite. In fact, I will oh. ask that. It's the other okay. way round. You can't drive between 25 and 40. You can drive under 25. Okay. You can drive over 40. But you're not allowed to do that. So, yes, Brian, you're right. The reason you're not wearing a seatbelt is because you're driving on an ice road. And should something go wrong, you want to be able to get out of the car quickly. But why can't you drive those speeds? Is that then to do with the revs of the engine heating up the engine? No, because you'd just better just change the gears if you could just go in different gear. This question appeared on my desk, by the way, uh, just before this episode. And I was like, oh, I didn't get to do a video on that. This is many, many years ago. Uh, I went with some friends specifically so we could tell this story, drive on the ice road, get all this information out. And it was a warm winter that year. And that just did not freeze. Just <laughs> the, the ice road was just ocean. <laughs> Didn't you also have one where the you went to Iceland to was it a, a volcano and you just had a terrible There have been many times where I, I've gone somewhere in Europe and the <laughs> thing just hasn't worked. Like thank you thank you for you know stabbing me in the heart with that as well. But this one was so terrible you made a video about it. I seem to remember the experience was so bad it was twice worse. now. <laughs> twice. I, I, I went to Iceland the first time uh to try and do a story on the the new volcano they had. Mm. Um and then it stopped uh the day before I arrived. Uh, and like, it's fine, we'll do the story about all the infrastructure around it. And then I got very bad food poisoning. Uh, so that, was, that wasn't a great trip. Uh, it's fine. I went back a couple of years later when it started exploding again, and it stopped on the morning my plane landed. I apparently have a superpower where I can go places and stop <laughs> volcanoes. So if anyone, uh, anyone does want a volcano stopping, I will happily accept your plane <laughs> tickets. You should, did, were you traveling between 25 and 40 kilometers an hour when you arrived? Because that might have been the issue. <laughs> if I was doing that on the plane coming in, we've got problems. <laughs> so what happens in between those speeds? Why wouldn't you want to drive between 25 and 40 kilometers an hour? That feels like an engineering question. <laughs> <laughs> that is 100% an engineering question. <laughs> Brian! I, well, I'm not a nice engineer, goddammit. <laughs> um. Well, Tom just gave us, I don't know if it's a clue or just completely irrelevant, but he did point out that the road isn't always ice because it was melted when he was there. Does that help us at all? Well, <laughs> don't drive, you're not going to be driving on water, so I think that's... <laughs> but, like, the road isn't ice all year, so... It has the opportunity to melt. One of the things I, I obviously didn't get to talk about was that there is an investigation and surveying team who go out because as soon as the ice road forms, all the locals want to use it. You know, it, is, is the ice, oh, it looks thick enough, we'll be fine. So they have to go out there with testing equipment to start marking it out and blocking people from taking it too early in case they crash through. Is it, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking like, this is like a, James Bond film, you know, I, I think where you go across the ice very, very slowly. And then if it starts to crack, you speed up and take off as fast as you <laughs> possibly can uh, while the ice is cracking underneath you. And, you know, the 
Russians are falling into the water behind you. I have a feeling that was die another day and that the ice was actually being melted by a giant laser from orbit. You're right. I'm not entirely certain that's relevant here. Is the ice being melted awesome. by a giant laser from orbit? <laughs> is the car invisible or visible? Why Why is apparently my gesture for giant laser from orbit <laughs> holding two fists in front of me like I'm holding, holding a broomstick? I don't know, it's a good, I don't know yeah. why I'm doing that. There is, there is a reason. There is something the car does between 25 and 40 that, that works with the ice. It's anti-lock braking or something. I mean, you're kind of along the right lines there. You're more along the lines with ABS. What does that, what does that do? Now my dad will be ashamed of me because he's told me this so many times. He's an ex-mechanic. Wait, ex does no one here know how anti-lock brakes work? Oh, I've read it so many times and I'm not an automotive person. <laughs> I don't make videos okay. about My dad's probably told reason. me this 15 times and I'm, it's, he would be so disappointed my, right now. My <laughs> producer, the, the question editor for this, has just, has just pinged up going, oh, I don't know either. I, th sorry, I will stop being exasperated. This is one of those things that I genuinely thought was common knowledge and apparently isn't. I apologise to everyone listening. Um, Anti-lock brakes work by turning the brakes on and off and on and off very, very quickly to avoid locking up. So they, you're right, this would probably have the same sort of effect as driving between these speeds. Well, that would potentially, just the stopping, almost the stopping and starting effect on the ice would potentially damage the ice then, wouldn't it? Yeah, it sets up vibrations and resonances in the ice. If you're driving mm. at those speeds, that is about the speed at which the ice will want to crack underneath as you send that kind of pressure wave through it. So mm. you're fine driving under 25, you're fine driving over 40, but in between, you can sort of maybe cause the ice road to explode a little bit, which isn't ideal. They should just say not over 25. <laughs> I feel like that's yeah, just easy. Yeah, but if you do that, people will break the speed limit, and then you've got a problem. Also, this is like a 12-mile ice road. You really want to go a bit faster than that. It reminds me of the, the, the study into the, the safest floor of an apartment building to drop a cat from. Um, or let's say, sorry, let's, I'll rephrase that. The ground floor? The safest floor for a cat to fall. Here's the thing. I know exactly the study you're talking about. Yeah. So, like there is a point where if it's too low, I think it's like the first floor is okay, but the second floor, it'll, it doesn't have time to to stretch out its, you know, get, get into, a, into a position where it can slow its speed. And so it'll get hurt. But there's a, a, a range of floors that if the cat falls, it's more likely to survive. That's not actually at the bottom. It sort of reminds me of that. This was in New York City, if I remember rightly. And just to be clear, they tested it by going to veterinary hospitals and asking people with cats what floor it fell from. They did not take the cat and place it out the window. That we know of. So yes, in Estonia, if you're driving on an ice road, you must keep your seatbelt unbuckled and you cannot drive between 25 and 40 kilometers an hour because it sets up resonances that can damage the ice. <laughs>